The 262 Prairie type is, in many ways, a historical oddity among steam locomotives. Outside of logging railroads, it was never very common in the United States and Canada, and this is reflected in the model railroad world as well. There's only one HO scale Prairie on the market, and it's a rather cheap and crude model. But I happen to find these engines quite interesting, so with my very limited kit bashing skills, I decided to build one myself. The starting point was a Bachmann 280 consolidation. These were introduced in the late 90s and are still in production today. Although it's changed very little in 20 years, it's still a fantastic model. Smooth running, highly detailed, and not too expensive. I was in the middle of doing a custom paint job on this one when I decided to embark on this, which is why it's red. I had planned to paint the tender before I finished this video, but I can't spray paint outside until the weather warms up, and several people wanted to see this video sooner than that, so the tender's gonna have to wait. This build had some easy parts and some very difficult parts, but ultimately I think it was all worth it. I did do a few things that weren't strictly necessary, like moving the headlight and shortening the tender, just so it wouldn't look so obviously like a modified Bachmann model. Now before we get started, I should warn you, this is not a how-to video, and there are some things that I'd do quite differently if I did this a second time. But without further ado, let's get started. The first step was to remove the rear pair of driving wheels. This was probably the easiest part of the whole project. I removed the crank pin screw on the third axle, which is just a tiny flathead screw, and then lifted off the eccentric crank, driving rod, spacer ring, and connecting rod. Each segment of the connecting rod is separate, so no cutting is needed. Just pull off the rearmost section, and then put everything else back on in the correct order. Obviously, the same thing needs to happen on the other side. Next, I removed the cover plate, being very careful not to damage the pickup wipers. This can be a little tricky on this model because the brake shoes like to jam between the wheels, so gently hold the wheels in place while you lift the cover upwards. This model has a second cover plate under the cover plate. You don't have to take this one off completely, just lift the rear end enough to pull the axle out. I then put the main cover plate back on, squeezing the pickup wipers gently so they slide in behind the wheels, just like in the 10-wheeler video. At this point, the 280 was now a 260, and I test ran it on the layout to make sure everything was working. It actually seemed to run better this way than it did before. I think the shorter wheelbase gets around my sharp curves more easily. Although it runs well like this, it looks pretty silly with that massive rear overhang, so the next step was to add a trailing truck. The trailing truck is where things got really tricky. Mounting it would be easy enough, but it needs to swing back and forth, and it can't because it hits the frame. To solve this, I used a Dremel rotary tool to carve out the rear part of the frame just ahead of the drawbar to make room for the wheels to move. If you do this, take the cover plate off first. I didn't and broke one of the wires going to it, which led to a lot more frustration later. I had to grind off quite a lot of metal to make enough room, and I also ended up taking a chunk out of the drawbar mount by accident, but that wasn't a problem for reasons I'll get to in a minute. The edges ended up quite messy, and I had to clean them up with small files later. Around this time, I also cut off the pickup wiper and brake shoe from the last driver. If you do this with a knife, be sure to cut away from your fingers. Don't ask me how I know. The trailing truck itself was just something I found in the scrap box, and I have no idea what engine it's originally from. I did swap out the wheels with smaller ones, I think they're 28 scale inches in diameter, from a leftover Bachmann 460 leading truck. It might be possible to fit a 33 inch diameter wheel if you carve out more of the frame, but I make no guarantees, so you'll have to experiment with that on your own. I did also replace the leading wheels with the 28 inch ones, since all the pictures of prototype prairies I could find, the rear wheels were larger or the same size as the front wheels. The trailing truck pivots on a screw driven into a hole in the cover plate. I glued on a KD coupler box lid so I could tighten the screw all the way down and still give the truck some wiggle room, and I filed it down to the point where the truck can still move up and down a few degrees, but the screw head doesn't hang below the level of the rails and jam on switch points. This is a delicate balance, and I went through several lids trying to get it right. The trailing truck still had a problem, though. It would jam against the frame when entering or exiting an 18-inch radius curve and derail the engine. I tried filing back a bit more of the frame, and that helped, but not enough. I eventually realized it was hitting the drawbar mounting screw, and the wires from the pickups were also getting in the way. I ended up filing off most of the drawbar mount to raise the drawbar up out of the way of the wheels, and I used the KD coupler box trick again so I could tighten the screw all the way down and still let the drawbar swing freely. For the pickups, I soldered in some fresh wires and ran them around the outside of the whole trailing truck area, gluing them in place up under the cab. I tried to splice these into the original wires, but eventually I just got frustrated with it and ended up hardwiring the engine with no plugs and only two wires running between the engine and tender. The headlight wiring is now hidden inside the boiler, which was a great deal more trouble than it was worth. This will be a serious pain if I ever decide to convert the engine to DCC, but hey, that's future me's problem. After many late nights of tinkering, cursing, and accidentally gluing my fingers, I finally got it all together and working. The trailing truck swings freely and doesn't derail, all the pickups work, and the engine runs perfectly. I hid all the mess with black paint, and it looks reasonably professional as long as you don't look too close. 
Now, I could have called the project done at this point, but it still looked a lot like a Bachmann consolidation, and I wanted to make a truly unique engine. So I decided to move the headlight. I pried it off the front of the smoke box and glued it near the top, but there were three problems. First, it was difficult to position the headlight exactly right in the time it takes super glue to set, so I ended up pulling it off and trying again several times. This messed up the paint, but a silver sharpie hid the worst of it. Second, the headlight left behind two holes where it had been. The first one I tried to patch up using super glue as body filler, which I now realize was a terrible idea, but luckily Silver Sharpie does cover a lot of mistakes. The other hole was directly in the center, and I covered it by gluing on a round number plate from an IHC 440. Like the headlight, it took several tries to position properly. Third, the LED for the headlight on these engines is inside the boiler, so with it moved, it no longer worked. To fix that, I ended up drilling out the headlight itself, gluing an LED inside it, and running the wires through two tiny holes drilled on the top of the smoke box. I messed this up a few times as well, and I went through several spare headlights trying to get it right, but I did eventually get one put together that works. Part of being a novice kit basher is ruining a lot of parts, but luckily I've been collecting spares for a very long time. Everything after this was just messing around with details. I wanted a fancier looking headlight bracket, so I modified a brass one from the same old IHC 440 shell, painted it black, and glued it under the original bracket. I also wanted a shorter tender, partly to make it look more like a small short line engine, and partly so it would fit on my turntable. I bought a short Vanderbilt tender for it, but that looked too small, so I cut up the original tender with a small razor saw and took about an inch of length out of it. Getting the cuts at a perfect right angle was harder than I expected, and I ended up filing it a lot to make it fit together straight. I did the shell and frame separately, and the halves are held together with a massive quantity of super glue. I also cut out the water hatch from the section I'd removed, filed it to clean up the edges, and glued it back onto the tender. Side note, super glue accelerator is insanely useful stuff. Spray this on the joint and it'll be completely cured in less than 10 seconds. It doesn't matter what brand you use. Zip Kicker is probably the best known one, but this is Insta Set by Bob Smith Industries. If you use super glue a lot, get some. It will change your life. Well folks, at long last, that's the end of the Prairie Project. While it's obviously not completely done, I still have to paint and letter the tender, and I'll probably continue messing with the details on the engine. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out so far. It's a very unique engine, and while it doesn't match a specific prototype, the dimensions are quite close to several real locomotives, so it's a pretty plausible freelance model. If you'd like to attempt something like this yourself, I hope you can learn from what I did, avoid some of the mistakes I made, and bring your own inspiration to it. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.